we've actually talked about that quite a bit in our committee. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a report that came out a couple of years ago on Head Start. And what it said is not that it didn't make initial gains, but that it kind of faded out by third grade and we didn't see those. Uh, since then, in fact, uh, the admin, federal administration is, has taken a close look at the Head Start program and actually is only going to be funded those that kind of start giving up to the father. So that's kind of one thing. Um, so what, what kind of the key is, and we had a number of school districts come in that have started early education programs and then have shown the continuing gains all the way up to third grade reading level and on. So but they said, though, some of the programs is you come out of Head Start out early ed, but the first, second, third grade just hasn't, you know, they're not also stepping it up. And so they get there, and but what they still show in a lot of cases is that where there was a potentially a huge achievement gap, it did starting out lower that achievement gap. So that part's good. We just didn't get the gains, gains through third grade. But I think that's more systemic, actually, in the districts when they get the first, second, and third grade. But um, I mean, that's that fade out factor. In fact, the meeting we were. Uh, I was at uh, Mankato earlier and that got brought up also. So, uh, but, and, and so there's a lot of successful ones so that continue to gain and they just say it's a lot has to do with it. Those kids come in, you gotta keep it moving. And so, but no, that's a great point. But thanks for your words on all the everyday kindergarten. Oh, I didn't say, could yeah. I just say something about technical education? My husband was an industrial arts teacher and he was doing the nice It was kind of like, Kids were labeled, they're going to do this, or they're going to do that. They're going to be an academic, or they're going to be a technical student. Well, he said when they get to his class, he slams this big book at them, you know, to how to fix a car, the way they do now. Years ago, you didn't have to know how to read to fix a car. Nowadays, you do have to know how to read. And you need to be a technical student. We're going to try to beef up the technical and vocational part in the funding system too. Because that has I have been max and so we're going to beef up that. Okay. Gentlemen, I think you have a question. Or? Yes. For us, for, uh, is the, how much student aid is, comes from the state now for students? Probably, well, how much is spent over two years is about $15 billion. So in this first student? In first student, it, it differs, of course. and. Is it the same in every district? I was one of the, no, it's not here. The I, was like, <laughs> I was on the school board in Glenville, yeah. and Austin was getting at the time. They were getting a thousand bucks a kid more than Glenville was, and it, everybody was in between us. Here's the biggest factors that'll determine that: the, the general foundation aid is the same for every student, five thousand two hundred twenty-four dollars. Okay, and then then you start with the differences. You have probably the next biggest area is what's called compensatory. And that is based on the number of free and reduced lunches you have. Trying to somehow measure poverty versus saying, okay, you got more poverty, you need a few more dollars to try to close the achievement gap. So, yeah, of course, there's going to be variances there. Another big area right now is in the operating referendums. We still have about 35 school districts in the state that have zero dollars on the operating referendum, all the way to some school districts that have 35. So there again, it's huge. And, and just because they can't pass it yet. Uh, then there's another area of special education. Uh, your regional centers tend to have more special education costs and therefore reimbursement because um, smaller schools will send their kids to the larger that have better facilities for some special ed needs. And, and so, well, and I did mention, you know, that the difference between the, the high and the lows are, is getting wider apart, and that's a concern. I mean, it's about 31% difference between the highest and the lowest. So you might go on an average roughly $6,500 to maybe another school in district getting 9,000, and some districts get as high as 13,000. But actually, some of the districts that are getting the highest amounts actually are, from, are small, rural, uh, sparsely populated districts because their operating referendums are like 3,500. Herman Norcross, like 3,500. Campbell Tinton, my area, is about 3,200. 
but all that system does is, is allow those districts that are getting the most, those salaries are way higher than the rural districts. <coughs> you go into the metro and those, you know, my son teaches on, on the west side. He's in special ed, not in the one he's in the trace company. He says he could pick up 20,000 bucks driving into the city over what he's getting paid in a rural district. So that, that's just a perpetual thing that's going to just keep going. And their, their salary is going to just 4% of 50,000 is a lot different than 4% of 80,000. And that spread's going to just keep growing on you. It, yeah, and somewhere along the line, that formula has got to change. It, it kind of depends on where you're going. If in a lot of the suburban, kind of the wealthier suburban districts, they actually are lower on revenue because they don't have the compensatory, because they don't they have less free and reduced. Yeah. Uh, some have a tougher time passing the uh, referendums. And so they're actually, so you're, you're right, the salaries are higher in the metro, but that's not just teaching, that's everything. It's about 30% higher. That's right. Uh, but I mean, that's, but as mentioned here, if you're going to attract folks in your district, you're going to have to pay somewhat of the prevailing wage in that area. And so I, yeah, but actually, I mean, the formula has nothing to do with teachers' wages. It's kind of based on the um, characteristic of your student. You still have that 27 formula that the superintendent's about 27 when I was on the board. Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot. Is it worse than that now? It's, you can go down to Iowa, I know, Jerry, Jerry Rushadar, he's superintendent Glendale in another district, and uh, he came up Yeah, it's ridiculous. So 5,500 for one district and 13,000 for another. And then you want to call that Minnesota fair? Yeah, right. No, it, it's a it's an issue that we have there. You know, every time you try to make a system more fair, you add components because you're trying to address certain things. You know, if every student was exactly the same in every school, then you hear say, "Well, we've got these needs. We've got the, you know." It's just. I mean, we have sparsity aids, you know, or sparsity transportation aid, and it's just there's a lot of little different components. Um, I don't know if we're going to address that this year, uh, but that is something we really need to look at. Does 80 percent of the money come from the state back to the districts now, and 20 percent from the local, or where is it at? No. It's about that. that. That's about what it is. Federal and states about 80, and. When we did the reform back in 2001, the property tax portion of our revenues were about 12%. But now, since we haven't kept it scooped up to about 20%. See, when I was on the board in the 70s, like 65 came from the Glenda district, 35 came from the state. Oh, was, was that before we were, the... Our local stuff was, and we were educating our own kids gotcha. in the little bond. And once the state gets control of 80%, they're going to demand more of your local districts, they're going to demand more of your teachers. All you hear from any teacher is, all I get done is meetings, 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 and I don't get enough time in the classroom. I want to be in the classroom with kids. But that's why I went into teaching. I didn't go into teaching. Yeah. You know, so the problem, though, is that the more you rely on property taxes, the more you're relying on the local effort of property wealth. And, you know, it's already, you know, you look at, go to the website for like Wyzetta's football team. It looks like the Minnesota Viking website yeah. with the coaches and the whatever. Yeah, well, it's got 21 coaches for the varsity. Yeah, it, it just, it, and, it, and if we relied more on the property tax value, that would, disparity would be, Greater. I mean, I, I know what you're saying. You like the local, but it just, I I just don't think that would, it would well, be more, such a huge disorder. The more the state takes control of the poor and educational people, yes. in my yeah, opinion. Yes. And the federal is even worse. They ought to get the hell out of it. We, well, but one thing the state has to absolutely require are the, is the accountability. Well, I mean, we that. need to say, we've got to get to here and there. That's a state. That's a state responsibility for all of them. But I, I, you know, 